Now, I just finished watching this week's episode of the Gerard Carmichael Show. And boy, do we have to get into some things about avoiding attachment styles and how it affects not only your relationship, but friendship. So, you know, let's get into it. Now, if you're new here, I'm Denise Brady. I'm a licensed marriage family therapist, and I have been recapping this whole season, okay? Because it depicts a real life person who's raw, who's vulnerable, who's sharing not the best sides of them to the world. And what happens when you become rich and all the things you promised your friends you would take care of them and do, what happens when you add that to a person who has a lot of selfish tendencies? Now, this episode, showed a lot about friendships, relationships. And there are some things where I'm like, how would I react in some of those situations to have my friends there when I really don't want them to be? Now, in the beginning, when Jessica moved in, I was like, this ain't gonna go well. Because based off what we've seen with Gerard, he likes his space. He's a very push-pull, avoid attachment style. Come, come, come. No, you too close. Back up. Okay, you in my space. And now it's interesting because I want to know how old is Jessica? Because there's one part of me that is very much, girl, go for your dreams. You can do it. But there's another part of me is like, are you doing it off the back of Gerard? And the fact that he has fame. Now his star is even brighter. He's getting more money, more attention. And so does that mean now this is my opportunity to chase my dreams off the back of my friendship? So I'm, I'm caught in between. Like, I want to support. I want to say, girl, go for it. Support you. Go for your dreams. But at the same time, like, is it realistic? And as a friend myself, when your friends come to you with dreams, aspirations, ideas, do you go with it? Or do you let them know, like, um, stick to your nine to five, girl. That ain't going to work. But then that could also be seen as you're not supportive, you're not a real friend to support me in my dreams. But I think sometimes people have dreams that are, ugh, you want to be a rapper and you like 40? At that point, it's like, okay, is it realistic that you can be a rapper at 40 years old? You're going to quit your government job, your day job, whatever it is to pursue being a rapper. And now since maybe I'm a celebrity, maybe I have connections do I help my friend who's 40 years old become a, a rapper, an actress in this case? I really don't know. And it's interesting to see how <laughs> sometimes like Jessica is like a great friend, but then other times I'm just like, I don't know. It just seems like the fame of Gerard is getting to her head a little bit. Let's have a part in the Hamptons. Um, I want this and that. I really don't know. I want to know your thoughts. Is it too much? Or is it that you are my friend? You said you would take care of me. You got the coin. So does that mean we have the coin? Okay. Because I was uh like, the Hamptons girl who paying for this? Oh, wait, Gerard is paying for this. And then he finally got to the point where he was like, um, she got to go. I don't know if that was a polite way to kick her out, but I think it was kind of effed up to set her up in a high-rise apartment with only one month rent. I hope that was just for cameras. Because how do you expect this woman with no job who came here to pursue her aspirations to be an actress to pay for this, okay? And then not only that, once she sold in, you ghost her, okay? How do you give somebody a gift like that and then be like, okay, bye. She's calling, he's not responding. Once again, that avoiding attachment style, that push-pull, he's seeking connection but on his terms. And it's very selfish because once he gets what he wants, his needs met, it's like, okay, D&D, &D, ignore the messages, ignore the voicemails. And some of those um, voicemails that they played, I was like, oh, damn, you you really been ignoring her for a while, okay? And I'm wondering now if we'll see in the, the future, I'm sure we will, how her acting career picks up, what's gonna happen with that uh, high-rise apartment that she can't afford? But Jessica has her own stuff going on, trying to find herself. And I want to know your thoughts. Is it that we support our friends through no matter what? Or is it that we be honest with them about this is not a good idea? It's really trying to bridge that gap between honesty and compassion. 
what it, what is worth more? Where do we try and be more compassionate versus honesty? And can a friendship have too much of both? So we saw that a lot in this episode. Now we saw Mike once again. Mike ain't going nowhere. Okay, I like I said in my last video, what is it about Mike and who he is, where he is in his life, that he continues to put up with a lot of this BS from Gerard? Is the love that deep? Okay, because once again, we didn't see it as much as in this episode, but they have like some kind of toxic traits going on, okay? And now we get towards the end of the episode where Gerard is shrooming while listening to Brene Brown. That's some nasty work right there, okay? But I guess you can have like a, a microdose, a trip, and a, a lot of things will come out for you. A lot of my clients do microdose to help them with anxiety, depression, take a little bit just to get them through the day. Some people nowadays are microdosing more than taking medication. So if you, you you are a person who maybe microdoses to help you cope and get through life, let me know how has that really helped you. But it was interesting. I'm like, okay, what kind of trip is this about to have? Or it could be just like a little way of him coping. But towards the end when we saw him trying to make amends with his friendships, all the people who he has ghosted. And the thing is, I hear him apologizing but where are the actions, okay? Where are the actions that are gonna match? Like, is this gonna be your year-end friendship review? Is this gonna be you just calling us and doing the same thing you do every year? Are we gonna have behaviors and actions um, as a result of this? And have you guys gone through the same thing with your friends when they ghost you and then come back? Most of the time, I feel like friendships come back and they like, nothing happened, okay? I've had my own friendships in my life where I, I finally recognize and realize Oh, you're kind of selfish. What happened? We've been friends so long. Hmm. Let me reevaluate this situation and take myself out of the equation. Because the math ain't mathing for me where I am today. Those friendships do not pour into me. So why, why have I been pouring into them for so long? And sometimes you have friends who admit, I am a selfish friend. Oh, you admit that in my face? Oh, you can't get no more time from me, baby girl. I'm going to move on and find me some new friends, or I'm going to pour into the friendships that are really pour into me. But to admit that you're a selfish person and not take any action steps to really change your behavior is a no-go in my book, okay? But let me know your thoughts. Can you forgive someone who apologizes about the friendship and the way that they move, but don't take action steps behind that? Because too, too many people are holding on to friendships for the sake of history, Okay. And that's what we saw a lot. Now, let's move on to Atlanta, okay? Now, old Pooh Boy, Pooh Bear, Pooh, had that on ignored. You saw when he called, Gerard went straight to voicemail. And no, Gerard has money. So the typical ignoring the phone calls, ignoring the texts, that ain't gonna work when I have an Amex. I have a driver and I have time, okay? And I have time to fly out to Atlanta to show up on your doorstep with my cameras. What you going to do now? Okay. And Pooh actually let him in. And it was interesting because once again, Gerard makes it about Gerard. Okay. And even in the beginning, the chili dog was worth more than you showing up on time to the marriage, to the wedding. Okay. And... So what well, you might have had to sacrifice your time for for a JC Penney's, but it would have been for the sake of the friendship, for the relationship. But again, Gerard will Gerard, and at the end, it became about Gerard as usual. Now, I don't want to say that Gerard is a narcissist because I don't believe that, but he does have some very selfish tendencies that put himself above other people. And it seems like him and Pooh, similar to Jessica, have had a really um, a long friendship. We saw the videos. We saw things like that. But I just felt like it was about Gerard. Okay? It's always going to be about Gerard. And I really hope that he sits with someone for real. Because you can go to therapy and not do the work. Okay? You, let me say that again. You can go to therapy and not do the work. Okay? So I want him to really sit with someone and take this ish seriously okay but let me know your thoughts so many things about friendship dynamics happen what do you think is going to happen with jessica 
let me know your thoughts this was episode three and we can get into it make sure if you have not already you like subscribe help your sister out and i will see y'all next week for episode three